Welcome back. The myth we're testing is if you're driving alongside a big rig when its tire blows, can that exploding tire kill you or specifically behead you? So this is our big rig suspended in midair by our 30,000 pound forklift. We are going to lower this down onto our dynamometer. I know it looks like a pickup truck, but in fact, it's a dynamometer. It'll spin up to speed, spinning this wheel in the correct direction. We are going to make this tire fail by hell or high water. And that failing tire hopefully will knock Buster's head right off his body. The reason we're using a motorcycle here is because this is a worst case scenario. Obviously, on a motorcycle, you're a lot more exposed. And so if a big tire like this goes off, while we could have put a, a car there, uh, we figured this is the nastiest thing we can do with this particular experiment. Things are only going to get nastier for Buster, because to blow the tire, Adam and Jamie are going with the uh, direct approach. That's the shotgun. We're using a standard 12-gauge shotgun with a deer slug in it. The deer slug is actually one of the heavier bullets that is available in any kind of normal civilian weapon. It'll penetrate the tire, and the big question here is whether the air inside the tire is enough to actually make it rip or do something violent other than hiss. And what we're hoping, if everything goes really well, what'll happen is that slug will enter the tire right about here and compromise the radial. That's the steel wires that run around the perimeter of the tire. Once that radial gets compromised, if the gods are shining on us, this thing will open up like a zipper and fail in a magnificent fashion, slicing Buster's head right off. That's the theory, but in case the impact is not enough to sever Buster's head, the team has an injury monitoring backup. Our crash test dummy has shock watch stickers. So by looking at which one of these gets tripped, both on his head and on his torso, we'll be able to see what kind of damage he sustains during this tire accident. With the dynamometer spinning, it's time for the magic bullet. Yo. Of course, this isn't a typical way for a truck tire to blow, but this should result in the catastrophic failure that this myth needs. OK, this is tire blowout, shotgun shell, revving the engine. While Adam revs the target tire up to highway speeds, Jamie rides shotgun. I'm good whenever, uh, whenever we're clear elsewhere. He must hit the tire, pump to standard truck pressure of 115 PSI, sidewall center. That's a hit, man. Nicely done. I heard it go up. Yep. But that was not the catastrophic failure we wanted. Jamie was right on the money, hitting the tire dead on. But there sure was no explosion. That's a neat hole. It's right there. That's the hole? Well, that ought to tell us something. I mean, that bullet's that big around. You know, that's, they don't get any bigger than that. And it hit it clean right in the sidewall. It had to hit some of those cables. That was full pressure. That was a perfect hit, so. The high speed shows the moment of impact as the slug pierces the tire. But Buster's white knuckle ride is unaffected. To get a tire explosion, you're going to need a plan B. We have to come up with a new plan, because what we're doing isn't working. These tires are super crazy. You know, incredibly resilient. Supposing you're silly enough to tailgate a truck, would this dangerous stunt really improve your gas mileage? Tori, Grant and Carrie's wind tunnel tests have given this myth the thumbs up, in theory. That is so much more than I expected. But what about in practice? Time to go full scale. We should drive at different distances behind the truck. We'll start at 100 feet, move our way up to two feet, and see if we save fuel as we get closer to the truck. Two feet seems really dangerous. Who's going to drive? I think Grant should do it, because he just had his middle name legally changed to Danger. Grant Danger Imahara. I like the sound of that. The Mythbusters also like the look of the impressive beast they've lined up for their full-scale test at the Portland, Oregon headquarters of one of America's leading rig makers. Freightliner. We've got this new Cascadia Freightliner here. It took 2,500 hours to shape the aerodynamics of this truck to make it the most fuel efficient truck in the world. It's a brand new truck and we're anxious to get it out on the track again and uh, help you with that myth. Test engineer Matt Mark Stoller reckons drafting is suicidal, especially considering how many blind spots are on a big rig. But he's agreed to help out under controlled conditions. 